before we continue, I'd like to thank you all the viewers who have been watching us so far and also welcome all the other viewers who have just joined our streaming. I'd like to remind you that our live chat feature is available. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Our experts are available to help. Also, please complete our succession survey. Your opinion really matters for us. As a bonus, we will receive a link to the recorded webinar so we can go back to the great discussions we are having today. Up next, we are joined by Natalia from our market intelligence team, followed by Michael, our risk management expert for the cough market in Europe. Edelso, the head of our cough risk management team in Brazil, is speaking from our office in Sao Paulo. Their discussions will revolve around the status of the global cough market and what the future holds for this wonderful commodity that helps us, all of us, right, get going in the morning. Welcome, Natalia, Edelso, and you. Hello, Thais, and thank you for the opportunity to share an overview of Coffee Fundamentals for 2023. First, we will explore some of these fundamentals from the origin side with Edelcio, our head of coffee here at Hedgepoint. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for our viewers, and uh, I'll be here to try to speak a little bit about coffee this afternoon. Thank you, Edelcio. Uh, so, Adelsio, we've started 2023 with a major drop in coffee prices, which was a reflection of increased optimism regarding the Brazilian crop with potentially higher yields than initially expected, as well as a bearish macroeconomic outlook, as we've explored, explored earlier today in our roundtable discussions. This, alongside a stronger uh, Brazilian currency, led differential levels in Brazil to shoot up with high screens and finding good cups turning positive, leaving a lot of distortion between buyers and sellers. How are these levels affecting the farmer here in Brazil? And what are some of opportunities that you see to manage the risks associated with this market outlook? Yeah, uh, farmers have been waiting uh, for better prices since market started to get lower and lower, what uh, started in last October. Uh, they have been holding their coffee and uh, the volume uh, in their hands. I believe that's one of the highest for the last years. Uh, as the switch uh, were inverted, so uh, the, the spot market was more expensive than the Ford, the buyers were not willing to carry stocks. So it's why most of producers had to keep their coffee on their own, in their own hands. Uh, this situation are making producers' lives even worse, even harder. Uh, on the other hand, producers are, care uh, like I said, producers are carrying stocks, not willing to sell at lower levels. On the other hand, the exporters that need this coffee are uh, having a lot of trouble to get uh, to their exporters uh, done. So uh, they, the differentials are very strong. Uh, producers are holding cough. So what could bring uh, a lot of, what could still bring a lot of uh, problems to the, the cough chain? Uh, market has been in a lower trend. So uh, it's uh, making uh, even more difficult the situation. Uh, what could uh, make all the highs uh, as a uh, sell opportunity? And the try to in uh, so maybe a way to try to recover exports and producer losses. Right, and Adelso, taking a little bit from what we discussed, it's established now that the 20 to 23 cycle is marked by a deficit, right? And um, we estimate we estimate that deficit between with a low range and a high range of estimates between uh, minus 1.2 and minus 4.2 million bags, right? Uh, which is still pending on a fine tuning of centrals and Colombia production figures once the harvest is done, right? Uh, as well as the overall demand that we have throughout uh, September. Still, uh, that deficit seems to have been fully priced in already and Brazil is likely to drive a surplus, right? In 23-24, the 23-24 cycle. And with our base case for the next cycle being 3.7 million bags of surplus. That switch 
from two back-to-back -back deficits and lower stocks at origins to a projected surplus uh, left the market currently lacking a strong price reference. And as you said, uh, farmers are holding these, these stocks. The situation from 22 to 23 is changing. The landscape is changing uh, towards 23, 24, right? So following this initial period where the market digests the projected surplus and thinking about mid-2023 with the Brazilian harvest and exports off season on the background, how do you see the market responding? Yeah, uh, I believe that not even the most pessimist cough market participant would think that uh, we were around in 150s, 140s, early G January 2023. So uh, the economic power from funds, I believe uh, that the doubts regarding consumption resilience in a recession period and uh, uh, next crop from Brazil, this, this year crop, 23-24, uh, better numbers brought the market a lot of pressure and made almost all origins delay on their fixations and put a cap on the market. Uh, in the Brazilian off-season crop, a low co coffee uh, quantity from the last crop to be commercialized and with a very difficult market ex to export to originate coffee uh, in this market should keep quiet until uh, at least new Brazilian crop start to be available uh, and have a strong price or have a strong price recover. Uh, what could bring to producers and exporters uh, better prices and wider differentials? What could make both uh, lives better and easier? But it's not uh, easy because funds are too heavy on their sales, so uh, it's not easy to to have a very big uh, recover. Indeed. We've seen um, a very large addition to the sell side, especially in the last CF CFTC, right? And we have plenty of ch challenges in the first half of 2023 already for coffee. And it tells you, focusing now on the second half of the year, we have the highly anticipated 24-25 Brazilian crop development. And the first point is that we need to highlight is weather. The ENSO status is expected to turn from La Nina to El Nino already in the first quarter and persist at least through October. The phenomenon leads to warmer temperatures over coffee areas, also possibly disrupting rainfall patterns, but lowers the possibility of frosts during winter too. How do you see the 24-25 crop potential affecting the market? Uh, having last two years in a much lower crop and much lower from it, uh, its potential uh, due to lack of rains or maybe uh, due to a frost, areas uh, under uh, most of areas were under production. production. So the, uh, there is a power reserve for a big crop, uh, what seems not happen for one more year. So this year we will not have all the potential that we should have. That could bring uh the its hold potential for a big crop 24 25 bringing uh, a lot of coffee and make uh, making the the prices under a, a, a huge pressure again uh having the chance that we can have a better crop a better crop in terms of production mark uh, could have wider export differentials and uh, as we could we should have more coffee available to be commercialized and uh, the, it may be uh, lower prices paid to the producers. So the, the reason between the relation between the, the production costs and the market prices could be worse than we are seeing now, even worse. Uh, market uh, could be under pressure because of this uh, size of potential crop. So uh, we can see uh, that uh, the, the exporters and producers in a maybe difficult uh, year again. Yeah, we're definitely seeing a change in the structure, in the landscape. We're moving from uh, two back-to-back -to -back deficits towards a very likely surplus. And especially when we talk about the second half of the year with the potential of the 24-25 crop here in Brazil. Adelcio, thank you so much for sharing your view with us. I'm sure that everybody at home uh, learned something new today and thank you so much again.
Thank you. All right, moving on to our EMEA expert, let's take a look at the destination landscape with Ian Michael. Ian, Green Coffee Association stocks have finally shown results according to seasonality in December after increasing above the seasonal pattern through most of 2022. Mm -hmm. Stocks and destinations are seasonally elevated when we consider the last updates available for GCA and ECF stocks. Also, based on commercial positioning, there doesn't seem to be a big rush to buy. The question now that remains is if commitments are seasonally high and how the perspective of Brazilian 23-24 crop has gotten buyers on the sidelines, if at all. How do you see that destination dynamic in this first semester? Well, Natalia, we have had two exceptional years of massively changing drinking habits in many parts of the world. The out-of-home consumption has dropped by 98 plus percent during COVID lockdowns and at-home consumption went up massively. So coffee was not consumed as per cup anymore, it was consumed as per pot which automatically then results in a higher consumption number as a higher percentage of coffee is wasted and not being drunk. Besides this, we have seen a massive drop in global transportation capacities during the last years, like Evergrande uh, container shortages and less voyages during COVID, and a higher usage of spot positions due to the logistical issues in 21-22, which led to lower, lower stocks, not only in coffee everywhere, um, at destinations. Effect also reflected in historical low I certified stocks. And by now, we are going back to closer to normal stocks at destination as trade houses started to ship coffee in break bulk from certain origins like Vietnam and Brazil, which allowed a much higher destination delivery than with container shipments. And many industry buyers purchased a lot more of coffee when for, uh, for forward when C was around $1 and origin will to sell way forward. With the inflation and, and, and interest increase in rates and a strong fear of an again inverted market, Origin is still unwilling to go back to too much forward selling. And a rebuilding of stocks at destination and um, FOB differentials, which have not really reflected the market movements, have lead to a certain self effacement at buyer side. I would say it is a sit and wait and watch situation. And in regards of the 23 24 crop in Brazil, Buyers are careful as there is a fear of defaults and quality issues. If coffee is already at destination, they can more easily control the quality without a negative surprise. Um, hence, the market is bringing back trade houses to take the role of guaranteeing the supply chain and financing. And spot market is rather active now for cash and carry positions to fill gaps. Overall, I would think uh, most industry buyers will have or are about to start already to think about the 24 deliveries and started to cover a minority of positions uh, with bigger trunk to fall in the second quarter of 2023. Right. Uh, and when we think about the second half of 2023, um, we're likely uh, to see that trigger in a switch and how the market perceives demand, right? On um, macroeconomic indicators show some breathing room in terms of economic activity growth, credit, and financing. The scenario becomes especially optimistic for demand when we consider the 23-24 cycle. And as we've discussed in this panel, there are some major risks to the supply side uh, with weather becoming more unpredictable by the day. Can we expect the current trend of lower stock to use ratio in origins to remain throughout 2023? And how could we see differentials responding to that? Medium to long term analysis, I would say, are very uncertain by default. Maybe we can do some mapping of potential risks that might arise throughout the year. We have seen so many things in the last 12 months which we have never been able to think about before, and this might be the case for a long time forward now. Clear is that buyers want to see goods at destination. Questionable is the percentage of destination stocks which is committed and which is free for new sales, which answers is directly impacting the stock to use ratio. In regards of differentials, we must keep an eye on production and finance and cost at origin, as well as the labor availability. Differentials are currently kind of unconnected to the markets and both sellers and buyers have learned to accept higher diffs than in the old days. I personally do not see massive changes in differentials to the downside. And with the current market volatility, I think markets are rather trying to define a base for 23 right now, which will be influenced by macroeconomic factors, currencies, and whatever might happen in global politics. Exactly. 
Uh, Ian, that was an amazing discussion. Thank you for participating. Thank you very much. And now I hand it over to Thais. Thank you. Thank you, guys, for that great discussion on coffee. I'm sure our viewers really enjoy it. I'd like to highlight just why macroeconomic and techno sectors have held and still expect to hold a lot of influence of coffee prices. That is clear that Brazilian Araca production potential for both current and next crop will guide prices through the year. And especially when you talk about a year of El Nino. So El Nino coming up, there are more risks on the supply side, especially in a market as dynamic as coffee. 